All right, Nona. Welcome back to Horror and Pogue Productions. We aren't doing a mic check. You're just jumping right in and hoping yeah. for the best. Yeah. Oh Jesus! I really hope we don't have to record. You just it. <laughs> no, you did not like not doing a mic check. Oh well, so my phone's screening a call from somebody. So today, today we have stories from special operations. Special. Um, and don't worry. It only includes a little bit about Mike. Only a little bit about Mike Glover. So special. I mean, the rest of it is not Mike Glover. We might talk about Mike Glover right now, but not later. I just talked about Mike Glover. So that's it. That's all Mike's getting. <laughs> maybe. You don't know. Skip through the video. Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe it won't be. I don't know. Anyways. Um, I don't know either. Because again, he doesn't tell me what we're JF talking about. So JFK, no idea. JFK, Special Warfare uh, School, Change of Command on the 30th. That was That's okay. good if you guys don't know about that. Um, yeah, tell us. Let's just say generals don't really like having porn played in the background of the Change what of Command. What kind of porn? Uh, they're calling it gay porn. I mean, the guy had a bubble. I think it was him. it was self love. They, but they're calling it gay. That's the it's being addressed as gay porn. Okay. We didn't see the video. We saw a blurred out screenshot and somebody else's reaction to it. Somebody that was watching it being live streamed. Yeah. So, um, don't give out the Zoom credentials, Army. You know, there's a thing that you taught us back in the day called OPSEC, Operational Security. You know, loose lips sink ships. Remember that from World mm -hmm. War II? And probably prior? Don't give the keys to the car, or as uh, it was stated on Twitter, don't give the keys to the front door of your house and then not expect somebody to walk through the front door. Mm -hmm. They posted it right on Facebook. Wow, so literally anybody. Yeah, yeah. The screenshots of it, glorious. You can't cr cry that it was a hack when you're the one that fucking gave <laughs> Right. Out. You sabotaged yourself. What's that? Uh, oh, you said you've never seen Princess Bride. God damn it. Once again, <laughs> you fell for the oldest blunder in the book. Okay. You played yourself. You know that one. Okay. You know that one, right? You played yourself. Was it um, that rapper DJ guy, I think? I don't know. It's a gift that I use all the time. Okay. You played yourself. You really fucked that one up. So, uh, change of command ceremony um, on June 30th. Mm -hmm. Played out with... Um, you mean May 30th? Yes, May 30th. We're... I'm a time traveler. No. Yes, I am. You don't know that I'm not. You cannot prove that I'm not. Okay. Delusional. Once you prove that I'm not a time traveler present the evidence okay until then all right so I may 30th traveler. change of yes. command yes um fort bragg fort liberty mm -hmm. north carolina mm -hmm. um scene of amazing stories recently mm -hmm. um they had a very eventful may didn't yeah. they yeah yeah um yeah they had a uh black male in the background um jerking off with a butt plug in I mean, he was straight up, legs up in the air, laying back, showing everything off. What if it was a home movie? Has that been investigated? Uh, I don't. I'm sure. Have they gonna, done gonna, facial recognition on this you guy? See, you can see, see the person's face on the right, screenshot. To so, yeah. see if so, he also is an enlisted. And is it a home movie? I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. It would, I, I'm, I'm that gonna, was... The I'm gonna first guess. First thought that I had, honestly. I'm gonna guess that it's it was somebody who follows the group, or so you haven't been on Facebook in a while. You're right. Facebook, I Facebook has been doing this thing where they'll try and where ads would normally be, and where ads still are for other people. I don't know. I don't get ads. Okay. Um, where ads appear for other people, it would be instead like a group. Or like a public group, not mm -hmm. a private lock group. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a group or a page. Mm -hmm. So 
something that seems like you would organically engage with it. Okay. It'll just be like in your feed okay. where your like friends post would normally okay. be. And it's obviously there to try and trick you into engaging with more content and staying on platform. Okay. So I'm going to assume that this is somebody that either already followed the page or the account mm -hmm. or saw it so in their So it's not feed. a private page. It's a public page? Yeah. Yeah, the post is public and everything. <laughs> it's got the little globe icon next to the timestamp. Not good. Yeah. So I'm going to assume that it was either somebody that already followed mm -hmm. or somebody that saw it organically like that. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to troll this. I, and put up their home movie. I would. I, it might be a home movie, but I don't think it's the person that uploaded or the person that streamed its home movie. I'm okay, guess, if it was sent to I'm them, then that would be revenge porn, and that would be a whole other issue. Um, I'm not even going to go as far as to say revenge porn. I'm going to go and say, like, they posted it publicly, and somebody just grabbed a link and then cast it or um, played it on their screen and then put their screen up on the, the Zoom as, like, the presenter or whatever. All of the things are going through my head right now. Army comms, special operations comms. Come on, guys. Like, yeah. The public affairs office right now is probably just fucking losing their mind. How long was it up for? I don't know, actually. Um, I didn't see anybody talk about that. All I saw was, so this happened on the 30th. I learned about it, like, right when I woke up on the 31st. Okay. And the way that I learned about it was somebody shared a screenshot of a t-shirt from Instagram that said, I survived the... Change of command ceremony from 30 June 2024. And I asked the guy to share it. I was like, what's the context? I hope this is funny. And he was like, no, but yes, because it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, it was. What would you do if you were getting an award and there was a big black dude stroking his dick on the monitor right behind you? Continue on. You just have to pretend that it didn't happen. With a butt lug. You have to you have to maintain your uh, composure okay. and act like it didn't happen. You wouldn't even okay. acknowledge it. Okay. But everybody in the audience yeah. is allowed to acknowledge it. Well, they're going to. Right. They're going to try not to. But you know that there were kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody, there's, somebody's going to be held accountable on the Army side, which mm -hmm. is kind of unfortunate. For whoever posted the password. For the zoom no to not, be just, able to... not just that like the the command group is going to come down on them and be like you guys should have fucking known better mm -hmm. even though they've probably been doing it this way for a long time mm -hmm. and they did know in the past but it's one of those things when you start making exceptions mm -hmm. and start making carve outs people are like oh this is acceptable now nothing bad has happened so we can always do it this way now mm -hmm. that's not the army that i was raised in the army that I was raised in, you always do it right. There's actually a saying that we use, train as you fight. You do everything to the T how you would do as if you were doing it real time all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, motor um, motor memory, muscle memory, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, repetition. Mm -hmm. You know, practice makes permanent. Right. Something that you talk to Cash all the time yeah. about. So... When your SOP, Standard Operating Procedure, mm -hmm. says, do this, do this, do this, do this. And then somebody's like, you know what? This time, skip step two. Mm -hmm. We don't need to worry about that. Whatever. You know, like, because I, I haven't used Zoom in a long time. But I know that there are, um, like, so you have, like, if you want to do interviews or whatever. Like I had done for Warrior Rising. If I want to do that, the link that I share is the same every time. Mm-hmm. And that's a private link, but there are also public links that are always shareable. So you can always have the same link that people always know, okay, this is always used for this purpose. Mm -hmm. And then all you have to do is click on it and you can view whatever it is. You don't need to password protect your live stream if you're doing it publicly. Just set it to public and just don't allow anybody to take the keys to your right. stream. Don't give anybody else admin rights or the ability to broadcast or cast. If somebody requests to talk or whatever it is on Zoom, um, click 
no Mm -hmm. or ignore it. Mm -hmm. There was absolutely no reason that anybody else should have had the ability to do anything with this broadcast, period. True. So somebody's going to, probably not just somebody, a lot of people are going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. They're going to come down to the command group. The command group is going to go all the way down to the lowest fucking private that was involved in it Mm -hmm. that pushed the button and they're going to get counseling. Their NCOs are going to get counseling. Counseling. It's okay. So counseling. That's a nice word for saying trouble, right? Sure. The way that the way that you would view it on your end is like if you got called into your boss's office and you got written up a statement okay. in your record, whatever. Okay. It's an official. It's boss, an, please don't do that to me. It's an official talking to mm-hmm. about the incident. Most of the time, it's put on paper and it's put in your record. Sometimes it's not. Mm-hmm. This kind of situation, because it's going to be a CYA thing for the higher command, mm-hmm. it's absolutely going to go into that person's record. Mm-hmm. Hey, don't do this again. I don't think anybody will get any sort of UCMJ punishment or anything like that. Because What does that mean? Un- uh, Universal Code of Military Justice. So, like, punishment laws. Um, They'll just be painting uh, rocks and scrubbing floors? Yeah, yeah. Vol- yeah. Voluntarily. Okay. <laughs> um, They'll probably be... Q-tip dabbing holes in a cinder block wall for a while. Sounds about right. Probably showing up early, staying late. A little bit of that. A little bit of refresher training. Some mm-hmm. OPSEC training. Um, some really bad PowerPoints. Yeah. Things like that. Because that's how the Army works. Okay. Probably did a couple flutter kicks, a couple push-ups. Just a couple. couple. A couple thousand. A couple, yeah. Yeah. Top down. A lot of people were probably doing this. I've been in some of these calls. I've been in some of the calls where they ask a question, you better not answer with, I don't know. The the answer to a two-star general I learned in 2007 is not, I don't know. Tell us your story then. Um, He just asked why the unit wasn't 100% medically ready to deploy. And some you don't learn in medic school how to do medical records data entry, you learn how to stop bleeding and insert um, IV lines and stuff. like <laughs> That's what you learn in school. And then I get to the unit and they're like, you know what? We want you to tell people when to go to dental. We want you to sit in front of a computer and type all day. It's not something I learned. And then they're like, hey, we have this meeting. We have this command and staff meeting and uh, the commanding general would like to ask you some questions. Here I am, a little E3, only like a month out of training with no so you were 18. supervisor. No, I was 19 when I joined. So it was shortly after that. Um, so yeah, sitting in this meeting, or I guess I was actually standing. We were in our, our uh, conference room with our video teleconference set up. So they had two big, actually think of these windows over here, like both of them would be projectors. So you'd have one with your PowerPoint presentation that you were going over and then the other one was whoever's on the other side of the VTC call and then your projector and your cameras are right in the middle so that you're looking as if you're having a meeting in person and Private Lemax, why is your unit not 100% ready to deploy? I don't know, sir. In that moment, I didn't know that I was fucked or was it? It was, it was that moment. It was that moment that he knew, but I didn't, I didn't. Because the conversation just moved along. It was because my commander and first sergeant had an additional talking to after I was allowed to leave the room. Then they came back to me and got my platoon sergeant. And they're like, he needs to do some remedial training now. (laughs) Remedial (laughs) training. Remedial training. Yep. Learn very, very fast. You learn things very, very fast when you're in the military. Okay. Yeah. I learned to say, <clears throat> I don't have the answer to that question at this time, but I will get you the answer by the end of the day. Good boy. Yeah. You learn very, very fast that that's the appropriate response to everything, both inside the military and outside the military, because then people outside the military also don't realize that you learn that lesson the hard way. And you're always presenting them with, more information and buying yourself more time essentially okay you weren't prepared enough potentially sometimes you know a question might arise that has nothing to do with what the actual 
meeting was about mm-hmm. and you might not actually know mm-hmm. you don't have that information because it wasn't within the scope of what you were supposed to talk about right but now you've been presented that question and you can't just say that's not what this was about mm-hmm. we were supposed to be talking about this you deflect in a way mm-hmm. in a professional way i don't have that information this time give me until the end of the day i'll send an email i'll cc you blah blah, blah or i'll create a report whatever the appropriate response is in that moment to that question. And that's how you respond to everybody. So that was one lesson I learned. Mm -hmm. Another lesson that I learned in the same unit was that as long as you have a blank piece of paper in your hand and you fold it in half so that it looks like there might be something on it. Oh my God. You can walk anywhere. As long as you do it at a brisk pace, like look like you have a sense of purpose. Looks like you literally have orders in your hand. Yeah. We're not orders. You wouldn't, you, you don't get, that's not how that works. You okay. get orders like when you're PCSing or you're going to a school or something like that. Like, okay. Anything else would be like verbal. Like okay. if I was like, hey, you need to go do this or whatever. But so then what's the paper I, for? It could be just me. I have to get something signed or gotcha. I need to go take this to somebody else or I need to go run to another building or okay. something along those and lines. And nobody has ever opened your paper right. to find out no. that it was empty? No. So this specifically, so in this building, right? All the command group was upstairs. Okay. I was downstairs. Um, the the area that I was in, in the the uh, headquarters building was it was like a big open area, and then we had like a storage room across the way, mm-hmm. and then they had these fenced off like offices. So you had our the arms room was down there. That mm-hmm. was actually like a walled off armory room um, with armored doors and everything, walls and everything like that. Okay. And then next to them on one side was um, our Seaburn, the chemical NBC, whatever you want to call them back in the day, uh, their lockup. And it's literally just a chain link wall. It looks like just like a chain link fence, but it's a chain link wall okay. with a chain link door. And then on the other side of the arms room was my office with one wall, center block wall that butted up to the actual arms room Mm -hmm. and then an exterior wall in the back. Mm -hmm. And then I had a chain link wall on this side that butted up to our supply NCO and the other supply soldiers. And then the front. So you had no privacy at all to administer shots. No, no. Just bend over and take it in the middle of this room. Walk in, drop trowel. Everybody will watch you, both men and women. Yeah. So, yeah, so. But downstairs we had there was a there were bathrooms and stuff downstairs. There was like a <laughs> there was like a corridor, a little hallway, and a stairwell that would go up. So anytime say I needed to go like talk to one of the platoon sergeants, mm-hmm. I would go up that stairwell and I would hold a piece of paper just so that when I walked past the commander of first sergeant's office or any of the ops people or anything like that, they wouldn't stop me to try and talk to me. I would walk past them briskly so it looked like I had like something pressing, like I needed to go mm-hmm. and talk to somebody. And there there's a couple guys actually. Um, some of the platoon leaders and some of the senior NCOs that still follow me on social media. So they might see this and be like, we fucking knew you were doing that. But that's, that's what I was told. I do this and it absolutely fucking worked. But the other nice thing. Who told you? I don't remember. I probably Sean or pillow clerk, my other, uh, long time, um, mentor that I've talked about. Um, cause we had, so there were several buildings for our unit. Like I obviously worked in the headquarters building. My mm-hmm. office was my cage <laughs> in, it was definitely a cage. In, the, in the basement of the headquarters building. And then you had the motor pool right off to the back. And then you had, um, so this was an MP unit. So then you had the provost marshal's office that was kind of like right close by. You had the NCO and officer barracks and you had our barracks. And that was just on one installation. We had platoons on two other installations. So a lot of times I wasn't even necessarily there. I might have been at the clinic either for training or picking up supplies, things like that. So I'd have to put in orders or I would be at the uh, um, post surgeon's office doing classes and training or whatever certifications, Mm -hmm. or I'd be at one of the other installations doing like my rounds, or I might be in the field or at the range. Like I was only really in the office, maybe a fifth of my time, a fourth of my time. Okay. That's so, not too bad. so my, my flip phone at the time was always, 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 always fucking blowing up. Where the fuck are you at? What are you doing? I've got a soldier that needs you to do this and do that. Um, well, there's one of me 
220 of you. Mm -hmm. It was put out that I was going to be here on this day and I was going to be here on this day and I was going to be training on this day and I was going to be at the range on this day. Yeah. So any opportunity that I had to avoid having to have conversation with, with somebody that was inconsequential. I was going to. Inconsequential. <laughs> Do you hear him? Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was inconsequential. Leave me alone. Anyways. So, so, moving on to the next story. That's all to say that you guys need to fucking start taking OPSEC, secure, OPSEC seriously. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Pepperidge Farm remembers? Yeah. Yeah. Or we could use the, you've never seen that episode of South Park. We could use the member berries. Member? Member? Member when? Member? They literally had grapes that were called the member berries and they had like memories of everything. <laughs> See? Yeah. Moving along. Moving along. Right back to Fort Bragg. Yeah. So Fort what else happened? Liberty. Um, we have the story about the colonel shooting the trespasser on his property. Yeah. That was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Chechen native uh contractor for a telecom company, I believe. Um, legitimately, I guess, a contractor, just he wasn't working at that time. That's just like It'd be like somebody saying, I don't know, I work at Chick-fil-A and then I break into your house and they're like, Chick-fil-A worker broke into somebody's house. Like the Chick-fil-A part had nothing to do with the fucking story. Gotcha. Okay. But that was, you know, well, that's what the media has run with like this, okay. this telecom contractor person. And you're a thousand percent sure he was not working at that time? Yeah. They said he was not in uniform, had no identification, I, I knew no that he yeah. wasn't identified as, but yeah. I... Yeah. No... No uh, identification. So um, I'm sure around Fayetteville and surrounding area, they have similar rules and laws to for um, any of those kind of people that we do here, mm -hmm. where you're actually supposed to have your um, company name, your name, and a picture of your face and everything on some sort of identification before you can even solicit legally. Okay. You're also supposed to have a permit in most places, and it's supposed to be on you presentable legible like somebody should be able to right see but that's it. regarding soliciting and he wasn't soliciting even no even if you have a work permit or a okay. work order you okay. would have to have that documentation on you okay. and somebody said that a lot of times what they do so you know when you see driving around here you'll see like authorized contractor or whatever like it'll be a magnet stuck to the door for like um spectrum or 18 sure or whatever. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and it'll yeah, be like their yeah. their personally owned right, beat right. Up yes, F yes, yes, yeah. yes so you have to have that on your vehicle you have to have your little cone set up even right. as, as if you're driving an official vehicle. Um, and one of the other things that they said you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have your work order on your dashboard. So if somebody walked up on your vehicle, like let's say you're parked out here mm -hmm. and you're working on something or you're working on multiple lines and people don't know why your vehicle is parked out in front of their house, they should be able to walk out there and easily say, okay, it's the guy from Piedmont Natural Gas, or it's the guy from Spectrum Internet, or whatever. Gotcha, He's okay. around here somewhere. He's just not sitting in his vehicle. Okay. And you should be able to see why they're there. Mm -hmm. None of that was done. Okay. And they were taking pictures of this colonel's property. Right. They? I believe there were two. Okay. Um, I, it sounded like he only shot one. The, the details of the story, the two different places that I read the story, one made it seem like it was one person, one made it seem like it was two. They mm -hmm. said they... They said they, they didn't have identity or ID on them and their phones were set to Russian, which I mean, if, if we had like a, a Mexican lawn care person and they're, uh, you know, Spanish speaking native, who's literally just working for their cousin or whatever, their phone is probably in Spanish. Right. So what it's, are you speculating about this? There's somebody, you know, spying. There's been a lot of incidents. Um, I don't remember the nationality of the person, but uh, uh, just recently within the last year or two, mm -hmm. um, some people tried to gain access and they were telling the, the gate guards that they were supposed to go to the special operations headquarters and they were like, uh, well, you know, you need ID, you need to bring everything up, register your vehicle, mm -hmm. you need to be sponsored onto the installation. So mm -hmm. when you just come down here and he's like, no, 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 I just have to go there. And they're like, you're not going there. And we know firsthand because we went and... Yeah, well, I fucked up. Like And like I told you, so they've changed the RFID okay. um, 
passes so you just basically drive through the gate mm -hmm. it's just like a toll road now mm -hmm. so if you are authorized to be on that installation mm -hmm. you just drive through the gate will open mm -hmm. because it knows your vehicle and knows your tag and everything like that right. but for us because we had a pass on the vehicle mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that i still needed to take you and sponsor you on mm -hmm. even though i was already able to go on in the vehicle that we were in mm -hmm. It just, it never even occurred to me because when I was in, mm -hmm. if I wanted to drive and bring somebody on, all I did was show them my ID. They scan my ID and then I give them your driver's license. They look it over, they scan your ID. Okay. This person came onto the installation. That was the extent of it. Okay. So I thought it was going to be the same thing that all I was going to have to do is give them my license, give them your license and we would drive right on. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it because I was a veteran that that changed how that worked. Gotcha. So, okay. And like. You know, when I took the kids to the museum, right. didn't have to, they just looked But because in. they were under 18. Yeah, but I mean, and they didn't even don't ask. have they just driver's did a, license. They just did a cursory look. They're like, oh, okay, see ya. Yeah. But then with you, when you were the only person in the vehicle with me, they made me roll down all the windows. Yes, yes. Yeah. So. All the windows, look in the back of my Suburban, make sure we weren't yeah. transporting any yeah. illegal... All after I got kicked back and then got stuck in a line that yeah. I couldn't back up or turn around from. Mm -hmm. We went, we got there just the wrong time. It was like right before or right after lunch. I think it was after lunch because people were returning. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah. It's, I mean, and everything keeps changing. And now. It was a beautiful facility. It looked like <laughs> I was going to leave with asbestos well, yeah. poisoning. Or, and or cancer of the everything. It, just, okay. So here's the crazy thing. You saw how terrible. For Liberty, which is kind of a prestigious place in the U.S. Really? Country. Well, I mean, everybody knows special operations. Everybody knows 82nd Airborne. Like, everybody everybody knows about it. Okay. They also know about the barracks bunnies and the STDs. And <laughs> no, we don't know about that. I'm saying the audience, they know. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's, uh, they're, that's what Fort Bragg, Fort Liberty is notorious for. So you got, they're notorious for STDs. Then you got Fort Hood, what? which is notorious for people just being murdered. And yeah, everybody, everything's got their thing. Everything's got I like had no idea that STDs is what was known. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows that pretty much everybody in the 82nd Airborne has some form of STD. And they probably pass it around to each other within the barracks because they all fucked the same three girls. Damn. Yeah. 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 You guys are nasty nasty so if you went to if you went to a u.s air force installation somewhere mm -hmm. you'd be like this is nothing like what i just saw <laughs> you go there you can get like is five... that why you call it the chair force yeah you know gotcha. you basically get like five-star dining wow they've got you know you can get like surf and turf at every meal yeah why aren't you encouraging cash to go into the air force then because just like I've, we've said about the VFW and stuff like that, about how they treat the newer generation of soldiers like shit. Because, um, you know, your war will never be as bad as my war was. Right. I have to give him every opportunity to have a leg up over his peers. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So he can talk shit to the Air Force. And everybody... Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be that guy that was in the Air Force and you had it easy. The Air Force, by the time cash is even... You wanted to go into the Air Force before the Army, and you were forced to go into the Army. I wasn't forced to go into anything. I changed on my own volition because I was going to be delayed going into the Air Force. Semantics. I wasn't forced. I walked in there on my own accord mm -hmm. and walked out, and two days later, I was at Fort Knox for basic training. Right. When you wanted to go to the Air Force. Yeah. So Alex, my uncle, who mm -hmm. has died re or two years ago already. Wow. Um, he was the one trying to convince me to go in the army. Three and I was years like, ago. Was it three already? Jesus Christ. Um, he was the one trying to convince me to go in the army, but I was like, no, 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 because he was in the army. Mm -hmm. Um, stationed at Bragg before he got out. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but both my grandfathers. We're in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. My cousin's retiring. From, his son is retiring from the Air Force this week. Um, yeah. So I was like, I want to. I want the easy route. 
just just like with anything else, you know, like once you have like that accomplishment, you're like, oh, I had to sleep in the fucking dirt. Fuck you for having your five star hotel bedroom as a <laughs> dorm room. Get fucked. You have so much good food and all this selection, and here I am eating bagged fucking scrambled eggs that some powdered mm-hmm. eggs that they poured water into and shook <laughs> and then threw onto the fucking grill. And you're like, oh, I had steak and lobster. See the difference? You, you sound want, you sound jealous. Yeah, you want to be the guy that eats steak and lobster, yeah, but on the other jealous. end, but on the other end, you want to be able to make fun of the guys who had it easy that were eating steak and lobster. You can't have it both ways. You can't on either side. So, okay. but yeah, moving along. All right. So you think they were spies? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. the The colonel, you know, was probably well within his right somebody trespassing on his property. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's any camera footage or security footage or anything like that, but you can typically tell, you know, if, if somebody, I haven't seen anything about this yet. Um, I'm actually, I kind of wonder if Donut will do something about this, like create a video about it mm-hmm. um, with his high tech uh, recreation software. He uses Microsoft Paint to like draw stuff. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> my proprietary. I was wondering yeah, where you were going yeah. with quote unquote high tech. Yeah, he uses Microsoft Paint and they'll like draw with the Cute. mouse. It's the most crude. Cute. Drawing. Yeah. So cash can help you with reconstruction. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that could be cash a specialty when we launch this show. Yeah. The war cash coming this summer probably. Yeah. Yep. Summer um, 2024. Sure. So yeah, I think I dun, think, dun, dun. I think they were probably doing something malicious, even if they weren't, because they weren't there in official capacity anyways, right. he was still well within his rights, I'm sure. So this will probably, I can't imagine that it'll take them long to uncover everything because mm-hmm. they have everything. They have the devices, they have, you know, his statements, they have, mm-hmm. um, if there's security footage, I'm sure they've already turned that over. Right. So uh, I'll be interested to see how that plays out soon. Mm-hmm. And then just a couple weeks ago, special operations, uh, in a training, one of the trainees was shot. I, didn't we t- we talked about this briefly, didn't we? Or did I bring it up or something? I don't know. Yeah, because you were like, do you think it was on purpose? And I was like, no, because if it was on purpose, he'd be dead. And Was this the gun that wasn't supposed to be loaded? Yeah, blanks, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I remember you telling me about this. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, when I had posted about it on social media, somebody was like, "Did they hire Alec Baldwin?" Right. <laughs> I asked you that also. Yeah, but that was my the, response. That's the first thing that came to everybody's mind. Like, yeah. Is Alec Baldwin running special operations mm-hmm. training now? Obviously, obviously. So, yeah, we got all that. Was there another story, or I have were we no just going to, or were we just going to talk about Mike Glover? Fort Liberty is what it's called now. Yeah, yeah they couldn't they couldn't come up with a name from all the names of It's always just gonna be Vietnam to me. Like doesn't matter what is there. Yeah. That is what everybody in North Carolina calls Fayetteville. Vietnam. Yep. It is Yep. The, the two the armpit two, of North Carolina. The two dirtiest places in North Carolina, Jacksonville and Fayetteville. I do not what disagree did, with you. What did I showed you something mm-hmm. a while back and it was like the worst cities or worst towns in every state ranked or something like that? And neither of those two were ranked the worst in North Carolina. What were? So like Gary, Indiana was yeah. very obvious for Indiana. Okay. Flint, Michigan was very obviously the choice for Michigan. Okay. But the one for North Carolina was like actually a small town like near the mountains, I think. That I'd never even heard of. Okay. When you have glaringly obvious. Right. Jacksonville and Fayetteville that you could have named as the two worst places mm-hmm. or one of the worst places. Which kind of reminds me of, I don't remember what the one in Georgia was. I should I should probably pull it back up. But I've told you this story before about being at um, Camp Darby mm-hmm. and then going out to you, Buena Vista. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you pronou- pronounced it incorrectly. Yeah, yeah. And a local just got so, all over you about So here it. I am. Here I am in this fucking shithole town that has a dollar store, a gas station where you actually have to go inside to pay the attendant because there was no card system. And this is in 2009, 2010. 
Um, still at that time, didn't have a way to pay with card mm -hmm. at the pump. You had mm -hmm. to go inside to do it. So they had that they had some shitty bank, local bank to Georgia. Mm -hmm. Um, their town hall was about the size of the one in Belleville. Okay. Um, one stoplight, mm -hmm. a subway, a pizza place, mm -hmm. which the pizza was good. The pizza was good. Pizza okay. was good. That's all that he cares about, subway and pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I walked in and I get a call. It was either from one of the other, uh, one of my senior medics or somebody from my platoon or the PI, one of them. So I'm standing there and, you know, I'm, I'm on the, I'm in line. I'm in uniform, mm -hmm. by the way. I'm in line, I'm on the phone, and I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, we're picking up the pizza. We're in, we're in Buena Vista. This fucking woman behind me. Oh, my fucking God. We're not fucking Mexicans. Fuck you. It's, it's Buena Vista, not Buena Vista, you fucking retard. Oh, oh my I'm God. Like, I'm on the phone. Like, really? <laughs> Do I look like I'm from here, lady? Like, I don't care that you want to be a fucking racist piece of shit. That's, it's B-U-E-N-A-V-I-S-T-A. -E what other American is going to mispronounce it intentionally? Anybody that took Spanish in third grade is going to say Buena Vista. Would you have pronounced it any other way? Had you not known? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hello. Well, we have a we have a rabid willow. A rabid willow. Yep. She needs pets and attention. She wants all the attention, please. Yep. She's squiggly, which <laughs> probably means her butt's gonna explode soon. <laughs> You're so lovely. So on that note On that note. Do we have oh, any oh. other do we have any other stories to talk about? Uh not regarding Vietnam. No. I think I think we're gonna have a Michael Ever update. Not an episode coming out because this is the last episode for this week, but I think we're going to have a Mike Glover update this week. That'll probably be either something coming out about, you know, uh, an upcoming plea or that he pleaded. Do you know when about, the, do you know when the case? It said that? they, they asked for five weeks and to the best of my knowledge right. that hasn't changed. Uh, let's look at my calendar here, see how many weeks it's been since then. So that was May 5th. Mm -hmm. or I guess May 6th is when that had to have happened. He was arrested on May 1st. Okay. May 6th was when that happened. That puts tomorrow, one, two, three, four weeks from when that happened. Okay. So we might not actually get an update for yeah. another week from now. Well, when they're watching this episode, mm -hmm. this will be Thursday. Right. So the within four or five days of that, we should have right. some sort of update. Sounds about right. So, okay. Um, Unless, if we do, if do you we, think if he pleads out and just signs away that could happen before the five week mark um i think typically willow sorry for yelling in the microphone guys um typically they're not the judge isn't just going to schedule you a special hearing okay um whatever's on the calendar is what they're going to stick to so if no i i understand that but i'm saying if he's working what, they, his lawyer with like have, the DA or no, something like that. No, he would that. still have to go and, and gotcha. plea in court. I don't on know that how day. that works, so that's yeah. why I was asking. He would he would go in and he would plea on that day. Gotcha. Well, I'll get away from the window. On that note, we should probably go before he yep. has to keep yelling at the doggos. Yep. Waiting for it to bark one time. We'll try and do it. He's going to growl. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's staring at us. Yep. How dare you make fun of me? All right. Have a happy Thursday, everybody. Yeah, have a good weekend. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye.